To understand the skills involved in sliding down a hill, we need to understand some very basic physics. With that in mind, let's pop into the classroom. Skiing is all about manipulating forces. Probably the most important of these forces is gravity. Gravity pulls us towards the center of the Earth. Fortunately, the Earth's crust is in the way, so we stop at the Earth's surface. It kind of feels like we're stuck to it. Okay, now take the Earth's crust and tip it so it's on an angle. Then add a slippery surface like snow or ice. Then add slippery sticks to the bottom of our feet. Okay, now friction, which is another force that helps us stick, is reduced, and the hill pushes us forward while gravity pulls us down. Suddenly, we're sliding. Depending on how we manipulate our skis and align our body segments while sliding, the snow pushes back on us to either slow our mass down, change its direction, launch it into the air, or do a variety of other strange and wonderful things. When we add turning into the mix, a couple of other forces become involved. Centripetal force pushes an object towards the center of an arc. This is the force that makes us turn or change direction in skiing. Centrifugal force pulls away from the tangent of an arc. According to physicists, centrifugal force is apparently not a real force. But to skiers, it's a pretty important concept to understand. It sure feels real when you're getting that sensation of being pulled towards the outside of the turn. When a cyclist leans into a turn, they're resisting centrifugal force. And yeah, we do the same in skiing, as you'll find out later. Another important concept to understand in skiing is the relationship between the center of mass and the base of support. The center of mass is the three-dimensional balance point of an object. The center of mass of my pole is probably somewhere around here because the handle is heavier than the tip. Now watch, if I throw my pole in the air, it spins around the center of mass. In a human, the location of the center of mass is slightly different depending on our body type, but it's typically around our core area, just above the hips. Now to make things even more complicated, because we have all these movable body parts, our center of mass actually moves around depending on what position we're in. For example, if I move my arm out to the side, my center of mass will move slightly to the side. If I bend just at the hip joint, my center of mass moves forward. If I bend just at the ankles, my center of mass also moves forward. If I bend just at the knees, my center of mass moves back. I think you get the picture. Our base of support is what the snow pushes back on to prevent us from getting sucked to the center of the earth. For example, the chair is supported by its four legs. In skiing, we're supported by the base of the skis. We can widen that base of support if we plant our pole as well. When we're just standing around without our skis on, our base of support would be the bottom of our feet. As you may have guessed, in skiing, if our base of support fails to support our center of mass, bad things happen. So why the physics lesson? Well, in skiing, we need to move various body parts in order to balance against all these physical forces, oftentimes more than just one of them. If I were to sum up ski technique in one sentence, I would say we want to place our base of support so it supports and directs our center of mass. There you have it, the secret to skiing.